The BSI team has been called in to help build a better rebooking engine for Air London, an airline that has been in business for a little over three years. In this case, you get to try out to be part of the BSI team and help us make some decisions based on data and analytics. Good luck! Irregularities in passenger handling at our hubs is hurting Air London's customer satisfaction ratings. In fact, this past quarter we were rated near the bottom of all European-based airlines. Can you give me an example of a typical problem you'd like to resolve? Uh, yes, here's one. Looks like we're going to have another misconnect situation at our Frankfurt hub. Four passengers from various locations connecting to our London flight will be landing in the next hour. They've all missed their original connections. But there are only two available seats on the last flight today. So, you need to pick two to go and two to stay overnight or transfer to other airlines at a higher cost to you. Yes, except ours is the last flight of the day, so we're stuck. Sounds like it's time to overhaul Air London's rebooking app using a better rules-based engine to include more real-time factors and triggers. Give us access to your information systems and my team will come up with some fresh ideas about how to improve your rebookings. Jodis turns the project over to Chi and Matt. They start by looking at passenger information for the Frankfurt to London misconnect situation. The airline uses cameras at check-in to capture passenger photos. Here's the impacted customer report I just built to pull all the basic passenger info Air London uses today, but on a single screen to make our rebooking analysis faster. Jason is flying from Cairo through Rome to Frankfurt and then heading to London. Cheap ticket, which I guess accounts for all the stops. He has more than 4,000 frequent flyer miles this year, 128k total. Mm, looks like Lana does a little bit of traveling too. We don't have any data about Steffi. She must be a first-time flyer. Long trip for her from Japan. Check out Conrad. He's a big-time traveler, a Tier 1 customer with more than 260,000 lifetime miles with Air London. We need to keep an eye on him. Based on this basic data, which two passengers would you send to London? To create deeper customer insights, Matt and Chi add new fields to the rebooking screen that contain additional information about each passenger from finance. I've added some financial contribution scores, including lifetime value predictions and current year revenues. And these fields on profit and frequency of bookings show Jason only books the lowest margin flights. Lana books last minute, but pays full fare, so she's very high margin, plus she is booking more frequently. Seems like Conrad isn't a steady traveler, but it looks like his company's booking engine is forcing lower margin choices on him. Hmm. Based on this additional information, who do you think should go to London? Would you like to revise your two choices? Before we decide too quickly, it's important to consider some other factors. We can add which booking channels people use, their costs, and other information about the use of those channels. For example, Jason books on the web, a cheap channel, but we can see from the notes that he also exits the Air London site to competitors, so clearly he is price sensitive. Well, look at Lana. She only books through the contact center, never online. My contact costs us more to serve, but we get additional info by analyzing call center logs. Looks like Steffi booked via a travel agent. And Conrad? He always uses his corporate web engine to book. That's low cost to Air London. Based on this additional channel report, do you want to change your selections? Here's something I worked on last night. While we need to put all the factors into the rebooking engine, we also need to build a customer-centric display, one that frontline people like gate agents can use, and to give them a bird's eye view of what's happening for each individual passenger as well as how valuable the customer is. Here's a mock-up. I like it. Several different portlets of information, customer, lifetime value, booking history, and, and weighted on how recently a passenger had issues. Yes, when I was building that screen, I realized that there are operational real-time factors that we could also add to the customer page. Good thinking. What other kinds of active information goes into that part of the screen? 
Well, for starters, it turns out Lana checked in with an infant in arms. And look, here's another negative factor. Bags from Rome didn't make the Frankfurt flight. Poor Lana. Maybe the rules engine should give her a break. A baby, lost bags. At least she's going home to the UK, if we send her there as part of the top two. Oops, and here's another input from Live Contact Center notes. Adding in costs to customer care while en route. Steffi's original flight from Japan was canceled. She waited six hours in Tokyo for her next flight. Look at these call logs. She is not happy. I think we have a good handle on some factors for the new rule base. Let's bring Jody up to speed right away. Based on these active factors, it's time to lock in your final choices. The team prepares their presentation and factors in one more new opportunity to do better rebooking. So what have you found? There are a lot of factors that Air London can use to make better rebooking decisions. The good news is most of the information is readily accessible. It's a matter of loading it into their active data warehouse. So it's all in one place and real-time analytics can be run. The real-time information should give them a competitive edge since airlines have a lot of moving parts. Speaking of real time, we thought of one more opportunity. We write in the Times that Air London is adding in-flight internet seatback capabilities. Our idea is to use pop-up screens to interact with impacted customers, giving them options and gathering information. The system would interact with them in priority order based on the rebooking scoring. For example, we might find out that our top priority passenger, Conrad, would have been happy to take the flight to London around noon the next day. That freed up a seat. Our number two choice, Jason, actually lives in Frankfurt. He'd be fine with canceling the last leg. So that means your number three and four choices would have made the last flight of the day? Right. By having interactive capabilities, we would have accommodated Lana with the baby and Steffi. Looks like everybody'd be happy. Great work. I'll call Ian to describe how the system could have handled this Frankfurt scenario and see what he thinks of the new rebooking ideas. Sure, no problem, Chief. And when do I get promoted? I'm tired of carrying chi. Thanks for watching another episode of BSI Teradata. You can learn more about the BSI team members and check out other case files at bsi-teradata.com, including detailed screenshots of how we did it. See you next time with another case.